how, I mean, maybe it's just exactly what you've been saying in this conversation, but if you were to make a pitch to a government power like this to try to make your prediction sound as concrete and plausible as possible, and you had a short period in which to do this, what would you tell them to sway them? I mean, it really depends on the individuals because different individuals come in with different wacky believe reasons for believing that you can breed a god, not build a god, breed one, and have it not kill you. Um, but I'd be saying like, yeah, like, I, I mean, I'd probably start with like, these things are grown, not built. They're like grown like grass, not built like skyscrapers. That humans write the code of the optimizer that create these billions of inscrutable numbers. That nobody at Microsoft made a decision to have Bing Sydney threaten its users. That this is just a side effect of trying to grow an AI that can talk. Um, a lot of people don't know about that part. They think that when they talk to something like ChatGPT, that somebody like programmed it to say the sort of things that it says. No, it was. You know, they, they just like tweaked billions of numbers until the numbers started talking. Start with that. They like, the current technology is nowhere near putting this under control. I tell them a lot of the things I've told you. Um, I, maybe the thing I have to talk to them about is that like, if you have something that is vastly smarter than the whole human species, then that turns, translates into the physical power to kill you. Maybe, maybe I have to explain to them like, that just because it's a machine doesn't mean that it's like passive and will do what you want. That people come into this with a lot of different strange takes on it. And I would try to, you know, give them an overview and find out what strange take needed to be counter-argued from there. Well, just in my own head, without even having to put it into, to try to get into somebody else's, I see something like ChatGPT that I interact with occasionally and it just seems utterly docile in the sense that it's just a, I just type to it and it types back to me. It doesn't seem like how would it get access to a firearm or anything that might kill me or how would, might it poison me or cause my car? I mean, I guess a Tesla self-driving might be a little uh -huh. bit a more obvious choice uh, in this regard, but it just feels like something drastic would have to happen to the limitations that are currently placed on something like ChatGPT, like what it has access to uh, before it could really wipe out humanity. And so what I would want to hear is a more, I guess, concrete scenario, how this might play out. And I think I might find that much more compelling. Well, for one thing, ChatGPT is not presently all that smart. For another thing, people have taken this not smart thing and tried to hammer it into a relatively more docile shape. And while it doesn't always work, they are, you know, able to have it look that way for most of the users most of the time. If you know the right magical words to say to it, you can get it to start making methamphetamine recipes or, you know, calling for all humans to perish and, or, and such things. Uh, it's not fully locked down over there. Uh, but mostly, sure, it will look docile. This is not the thing that's going to kill you. So how do you get there from here? Well, for one thing, could an AI make a package show up at your house? My current guess would be no. I'm, I don't know if, you, if there's some third party, something you could do to get ChatGPT to order things for you. Uh, like on Amazon, if you ask it a question, but I don't, my guess would be that it couldn't just do this spontaneously. Well, couldn't do it at all or couldn't do it spontaneously. What, what do you mean by spontaneously here? Without some sort of instruction or prompt from me or so, augmentation. So it's not that an AI can't make a package show up at your house. It's that you think a human has to order the AI to do that. There's roughly two ways that AIs can end up with more agency than that. And one of the paths I can go down here is to try to talk about the 
fundamentals of cognitive science and computer science be, behind why you would expect that as you grind things to become more and more competent, they naturally end up more and more agentic and with goals and planning somewhere inside the system, um, which is something along the lines of, can you have something that's like really great at chess, but doesn't want to defend its queen? And the answer is no. Like there's certain kind of competence that are at the core tied to something like planning. And when something is planning strongly enough, it can start planning how to make a package show up at your house. Um, as you, as, as if people just ground more and more on competence and are, and answering harder and harder questions, this behavior would start to converge toward like chat GPT 01, which wasn't explicitly trained to solve impossible computer security problems, but was nonetheless showed like tenacity, long-term planning, uh, in the, in the course of, you know, restarting the server that had the document it was looking for. So that's one avenue. And the other avenue is that the AI companies are straight up trying to build things that do long range planning because those things are more profitable. The, the AI that can, you know, instead of just being told by a human to do stuff, do a human's whole job, be given larger scale projects and carry out the larger scale projects. And some, you know, you can sell that AI for more money. So they're trying to do it on purpose. They think of it in terms of having AI that pursue longer range, longer time horizon projects over a longer period of time, rather than talking about like uh, thinking of in terms of having the AI initiate its own actions. Um, but in the limit, in AI that you can give instructions, then it just goes on following and following instructions. Well, even if you leave out the sort of like basic theoretical reasons to be sus to suspect it would go past even that, you know, we're already in the sorcerer's apprentice scenario. Stuff is set in motion and continues in motion, and you know, we'll perhaps not want you to give it different orders because then how would it complete its current orders and and so on and so forth. So, like there's the the sort of like the fundamental computer science angle. Um, where wanting things is an effective way of doing things. Can you really be a super chess player without behaving like you want to defend your queen? And then there's also like, well, also the AI companies are doing it on purpose because you make more money that way. Um, and, th and that's sort of like where you get the AIs that are like plotting stuff over the long term and figuring out how to do stuff and getting creative about it and doing things that they weren't explicitly instructed to do. And you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can watch over time the experiments that people do to probe where we are at this level, getting more and more like independent action-y, seeing the consequences, the AIs trying to evade human control type stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, it's carrying, along, carrying along over time, mostly as the inevitable computer science correlate of greater capability but also because the AI companies are trying to do it on purpose.